Hello everyone, my name is Tommy Dobbs and today we're going to be talking about crash symbols. There are three main crashes that I like to teach, soft, repeaters, and cadential crashes. Before we dive in to the actual crashing of the symbols, let's talk about grip and how to hold them. I should say this, before I get started there are many different ways to hold the symbols. I'm going to show you my way and as you develop your own style, feel free to change it however you want. First things first is making sure you have control over the instrument. These are heavy pieces of metal, by the way. So the first thing I like to do is keep things simple. I'm going to refer back to the way I teach snare drum grip. The first joint of our index finger is where the strap will lay, just like so. Then I'm going to take the fingerprint of my thumb and place on top, just like snare drum grip. The other fingers are just kind of holding onto the strap and keeping things supported. So it would look like this with the tip of my thumb going into the dome of the cymbal. If you're trying this at home right now, it's probably a little painful. That's just because you're getting started. Some players put their thumb off to the side, but this way, for you younger players, you have complete control of the instrument. Then we just match it. And here you go. All right, let's dive into some crashes. But before I pick up this instrument, I want to demonstrate without. You can follow along at home like this. First things first, our feet are going to be shoulder width apart, knees bent, arms and shoulders nice and relaxed. Then we're going to match our grip like we did before. We're going to lay the strap over the first joint of our index finger. Then we're going to take the fingerprint of the thumb and squeeze down, just like snare drum grip. Then we're going to take the tip of the thumb and place it into the dome of the cymbal. We match it with the other hand. We lift the cymbals off the table. Once they're off the table, they're perpendicular to the floor, and, but they're also parallel to each other. No space up or down, nice and parallel. Then we're going to make our left hand stationary, and our right hand is gonna slowly come in contact with the left. The longer you hold the right to the left, the more of a sizzle sound will happen. The quicker you do it, the more of a light crash will happen. All right, let's pick up the cymbals and give it a shot. So before I pick them up, like I said before, we're gonna have them perpendicular to the floor and parallel to each other with no cymbal higher or lower than the other. One more pro tip for you. I close one eye and I look in between the two cymbals to the floor. When I do this, I can actually see all aspects of the cymbal as they come in contact with the other. Just a little pro tip for you. Let's give it a shot. And there we go, some soft crashes. Best of luck. Let's now talk about repeaters, or the type of crashes you would find in a march. Before I pick these symbols up, let's just talk through it real quick. I'm gonna use my hands as a demonstration. First things first, we're going to match our grip like we did before with the soft ones. Now we're gonna put our symbols parallel to each other and perpendicular to the floor. Now, instead of them being completely parallel, what we're going to do is pull the right hand down about a quarter and we're going to create an angle, something that looks a lot like this. Now when the cymbals collide, the top edge hits first and the bottom one follows through, creating a flam. This flam is actually what makes the crash sound. And the further we pull away, the harder we hit, the louder the crash. So for these, I'm gonna stay pretty close, but keep that angle happening. Now, let's pick up the cymbals and see how it goes. Got our grip, nice and secure. Pick up the cymbals. They're now parallel to each other, perpendicular to the floor. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna put them together. 
Now I'm going to show you from this angle, we pull down on the right just a little bit, and we're going to create that angle. Now I'm going to pull the symbols apart, and I'm going to crash them. There you go. All right. Now it's time to talk about the large crashes, or what I like to call cadential crashes. Those moments where you need to break tension in the orchestra, or there's something huge going on in the chord progression. Those moments where you just need to really get after it. That's what these crashes are for, and they're some of my favorite to play, because nothing in the orchestra and the band, percussion ensemble, sounds like this. So let's dive into it. I'm going to first start by demonstrating with my hands and then I'll pick up the cymbals for you. So first things first, I always check my grip, and then I start with the cymbals parallel to each other and perpendicular to the floor. Then for demonstration purposes, I'll turn this way. I pull the right hand now about an inch or two down, and the angle of the right cymbal gets even larger, something like a 30, 40 degree angle. Now, the amount of space between the two cymbals gets larger, and the amount of contact, the speed, gets even greater. That's really the key. The further you separate, the more the cymbals come into each other, the greater, the more powerful the sound. Okay, let's pick up the cymbals and give it a shot. First things first, we make sure that they're parallel to each other. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to put them together, and I'm going to turn to the side. Now, the next big difference between the repeaters and these is that the right hand is a lot lower than the left, I would say about two inches, and the angle becomes sharper, something like a 35, 40 degree angle, and the amount of space between the symbols when they collide is greater. So basically, everything's greater. All right, let's crash. And there we go. Let's talk about muting the cymbals. Muting the cymbals can be a little bit dangerous and a little bit difficult. There's two things to keep in mind. One, when you're bringing the cymbals into your body, be very safe. Try not to slam them into your body. You could hurt yourself. And two, when you pull them back out, make sure that they're ready to go for the next crash. You don't want to have to hit, pull out, turn, crash, and like that. So let me demonstrate that for you right now. We have our cymbals. We're going to do some repeater crashes. So we have a little bit of a tilt. We're going to hit, into the belly, back out. Hit, into the belly, back out. Hit, into the belly, back out. And you can see that when I come back out, I'm getting in position for the next crash. That way I don't have to add an extra step. OK, let's pick up the cymbals and give it a shot. And there we go. 